evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dave Gorman, and welcome to Modern Life is Good-ish. I called it that because, by and large, that's what I think. It's not perfect, but it is good-ish. And I've collected together a whole load of examples of what's good-ish about modern life, put them all on my laptop. I've got a remote control right here, and I hope, by the end of the show, to have talked you round to my point of view. And, sorry, I stumbled there because I'm slightly distracted. Can we start this way? It's, no offence, but you're right in my eye line. And you're wearing blue jeans. Hello, blue jeans. <laughs> High five, trouser twin. Trouser twin, I like it, yeah. Blue jeans here and here. And here, three of us. Hello, nice to Look at that, what a coincidence. This is amazing, isn't it? Look at that. Three of us out in the same room wearing blue jeans. And nobody else seems remotely bothered. <laughs> I'm sorry, if this isn't amazing, why is this a headline, ladies and gentlemen? Casually cultured Sharon Osbourne and Amy Osbourne wear matching blue jeans <laughs> to visit art gallery. This is a newsworthy coincidence. According to the Mail Online, if they think it's amazing, I think we should too. How on earth did that <laughs> become a news story? People wearing matching blue jeans? That's, a, that's not news, is it? They do this all the time, the Mail Online. I love it. They have a matching outfit story with alarming regularity. This is, this is one of my favourites. Look at this. This is amazing. Rosie in her robe. Transformers actress and boyfriend Jason Statham sport matching dressing gowns. Yeah, there they are. They're in a hotel. <laughs> They're in a hotel where dressing gowns are provided. What would be weird is if one of them was wearing a different dressing gown. <laughs> suggesting they'd brought their own and didn't really know how hotels worked. <laughs> they do this all the time. It's amazing. Look at this one. I don't, even, I don't even know who these people are. It doesn't matter. This one's really exciting. Matching my love. Pete Vence and Megan Camper step out in identical outfits. Not just matching, identical. Yeah? Let's have a look at their outfits bit by bit and see, see quite how matching they are. There's one of them. That's the footwear. That looks like a pair of boots to me. And... Um... <laughs> Well, it's, it's sort of trainers, sneakers, I would have said. Uh, you know, it's only the footwear, isn't it? It doesn't really matter. It's only the footwear. It's not really that important, is it? Um, that's the full outfit, really, for her. And... <laughs> identical outfits, ladies and gentlemen. Identical outfits. Here they are, in full. Even the headwear. One of them's wearing a hat and one of them isn't. Identical outfits, ladies and gentlemen. I, they do this all the time. It's amazing. This is, this is my all-time favourite. I collect these in the mail online. This is my all-time favourite, this one. Uh, just like Mommy, Jennifer Garner and Little Serafina wear matching glasses. Yeah? By the end of the first sentence, they're backing away from this one. By the end of the sen first sentence, it's almost matching. They can't even maintain the pretense for a whole sentence, ladies and gentlemen. From matching to almost matching. Let's have a look to see how matching they really are. There's a... Well, you can't really see there because Jennifer Garner's sort of sideways on, but there are other photos in the story. So sort of you get to see Jennifer's glasses properly there. And there's Serafina. Um, <laughs> it's just... check. <laughs> matching glasses. Well, yes, in the sense that they're both pairs of glasses, yeah. <laughs> I think I know what's going on here. I might be wrong. But if you think about it, like, forget that you know who Jennifer Garner is. Forget that you're used to seeing these sort of things on websites. Forget all of that and just imagine it's you. Putting that photo on your website for other people to look at, that's really, really bloody creepy, isn't it? Looking at that photo and enjoying a stranger, that's a bit creepy, I think. That headline, that is there, I think, to make us all feel OK about it. That headline is basically sort of going, well, we weren't going to take a photo, but when we saw how coordinated their eyewear was, <laughs> we just couldn't resist. I mean, in many ways, they've only got themselves to blame, haven't they? They put those glasses on their own faces. That's what they're doing, isn't it? Making it sound like it's news. They're making it a bit newsy, because that justifies it being on their website. And it's not news, it's nonsense. One of the other ways they make it seem like the news, they'll decide that something is the most. It could be the richest, the fastest, the shortest, the tallest, anything. The, the most extreme, and then it sounds like news. Here's an example. Uh, a head by a whisker. Stubborn stallion Alfie is Britain's most mustachioed horse. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, granted, it's a very mustachioed horse. I'll give them that. 
that is a very mustachioed horse. I accept that. But do you really think for one moment that they've actually measured every horse moustache in Britain? I don't. What they really mean is very mustachioed horse. But very mustachioed horse doesn't sound like a headline, does it? Most mustachioed horse does. I know it's trivial, but that's what they do. This is another one. BT ad star Chris to Wed Plumber. This is on the Mirror website, but it's actually from the Sunday people. Before I show you the most here, I think it's worth saying, I think I would probably have cropped that photo a little differently. <laughs> I, I might be being fussy, but I would have probably gone for something like that myself. Um, <laughs> just instinctively feel that that was probably more interesting than that. <laughs> if it was me, if it was me, I probably would have gone with something like that, basically. That's <laughs> just a suggestion for next time, if you're watching Mirror People, it's just a suggestion for next time. Uh, but let's zoom in and I'll show you the most. I've, I've taken out the sub-headline from my picture so far. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the sub-headline. BT Teliad Heartthrob Chris Marshall is to wed Britain's richest female plumber. Just look at those words, Britain's richest female plumber. Drink in that sentence. That's an utterly ridiculous phrase, isn't it? They, they do explain in their story why they think she is Britain's richest female plumber. It says his bride-to-be is Hannah Dodkin, who pocketed <laughs> £335,000 for winning an Arabian version of The Apprentice two years ago. She won a lot of money two years ago. We haven't checked if any of the others won the pool, so we're going to say that she is Britain's richest female plumber. They're guessing, aren't they, surely? This is another, this is my favourite. This is in The Telegraph. Britain's most prolific TV extra. 2,000 roles, still works in Tesco's. That's what The Telegraph said. It was in the Mail on the same day, Mail Online. Britain's most prolific TV extra is Tesco Worker 40. Appeared in a staggering 2,000 shows and so on. This one's interesting to me because you can trace the origins of the story back. It goes back to a local paper the day before. It was in the West Midlands paper called The Express and Star, and it's a good story for them because he's, he's local to them and it's a local paper. And he's not, in their version of the story, the most prolific extra in Britain because I don't think he is the most prolific extra in Britain. In their version, it's just a nice story about a local guy who's done well. He works in a local supermarket, they get to show nice photos on their website of him in costume, on set and so on. It's a nice story for them, and that's the real clue as to why it's in the paper. He's written a book. Now, local man writes book about weird showbiz life is a nice story for the local papers. But it doesn't really work for the nationals to say, man you've never heard of from Birmingham has written book, so they've got to do something else with it. And I think they've read those stories and gone, how many? Has anyone done more? Don't know, that'll do. We'll put that in. And they've just made it up. And I can really prove to you that he's not Britain's most prolific extra. Because, ladies and gentlemen, John Walker is here tonight. Oh, yeah. And you didn't notice, which just goes to show you how good he is at being an extra, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> If you'd have noticed him, he'd have been terrible at his job. He's just down there on the third row. How are you this evening, John? Yeah, good, thanks, Dave. OK, let me ask you a very simple question. The Mail and The Telegraph have both declared you Britain's most prolific extra. Are you, John Walker, Britain's most prolific extra? No. <laughs> Did they just make that shit up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in the local paper, they plugged your book. Did the Nationals plug your book for no, you? No, nobody mentioned it at all. Would you rather have had a book plug than be declared a weird title that you're not? <laughs> yes, please. OK. Everyone who reads The Telegraph and the Mail, if you're watching this, you now are literally obliged to buy his book. <laughs> and that's at least 12 copies I've just sold for thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Walker, thank you very much indeed. Look, look at that. You can make things up. Now, there is something else about the way they covered John's story in the mail that I really, really enjoy. Uh, it's the headline, it's the phrase, they, they use this phrase. He's appeared in a staggering 2,000 shows from Doctor Who to The Bill. It's the idea that there is some kind of range that we all understand <laughs> that starts with Doctor Who and ends with The Bill. <laughs> Because I suspect, no offence, John, I suspect that what they really mean is he's appeared in a staggering 2,000 shows and we've heard of two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it really means. I don't know. I love this. This phrase is abused all the time. I've probably abused it in print myself at some point. It's a lovely thing. The from and to. This is a website about diet pills. Don't go to this website. Don't take diet pills. That's my advice for you. As you can see, at the bottom here, they're talking about caffeine. It says there's a good chance you're already acquainted with this stimulant. It's in everything. It's in everything. From coffee to tea. <laughs> Every 
Everything from coffee to tea, ladies and gentlemen. The full range of hot brown drinks is there. Or is it? Who knows? Is hot chocolate included? I can't decide. I can't work it out. This is a website about killing an armadillo, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to kill an armadillo, please, please, please be careful, ladies and gentlemen. As it says here, these body grip traps, as shown above, are killers of everything. Killers of everything. From dogs to cats. <laughs> Everything from dogs to cats. I mean, the full range is there. This is a website about online shopping, OK? And it says here, they've got sites from all over the world. All over the world. Everywhere. From France to Germany. <laughs> France to Germany. How many countries are there between France and Germany? I'll tell you how many. There are three. You've got Luxembourg, Belgium and Switzerland. Even if you do it alphabetically, it's just as bad. You get Gabon, Gambia and Georgia. There's three, whichever way you slice it, from France to Germany. This is a good one. Campsite cookery, basically. Uh, it says here, invest in a camp Dutch oven. I'm not doing that joke. You do that joke for yourselves, <laughs> anyway. Do that joke on your own time. Invest in a camp Dutch oven. You can use it for everything, Lenny, and everything. From frying an egg to boiling water. <laughs> From frying an egg to boiling water. The full range of cooking there, absolutely. This is another cookery one. This is one of my favourites. Ceramic coated cookware. From frying an egg to... Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you the answer after this short break. Modern Life is Goodish and my name is Dave Gorman and before the break we were talking about ceramic coated cookware. Uh, this is the website I was showing you where as you can see it says ceramic coated cookware is good for everything from frying an egg to what? That's the question to what? Any guesses? Poaching an egg, okay, that's a good guess. Frying bacon, that's another good guess. Uh, you're getting closer, ladies and gentlemen. The correct answer, from frying an egg to cooking an omelette. There you go. <laughs> from frying an egg to frying an agitated egg, ladies and gentlemen. The two, the two types of egg that can be fried in ceramic-coated cookware. Sometimes it's not about the narrowness of the range, although that is fun. There's other examples I really enjoy. This is a website, a forum, where people were discussing a pop star called Angel. And one of the users from this forum had been to, their, to Angel's website and had seen that Angel had supported everyone, everyone, from Jim Davidson to Bobby Davro. <laughs> From Jim Davidson to Bobby Davro, ladies and gentlemen, am I alone in thinking that if that is Jim Davidson there, and that is Bobby Davro there, that there's only one person who can possibly exist in the middle of that range, and it's Freddie Starr, surely? That's... <laughs> That is the range from Jim Davidson to Bobby Navarro, as far as I'm concerned. Once I'd seen that, I wondered, is it possible to, to push the range, to extend it in either direction? Could I find from somebody to Jim Davidson or from Bobby Davro to somebody else? And the answer is that I could. I found this on a website about a, an Elvis impersonator who's performed for everyone, ranging from Bobby Davro to Gary Lineker. Let's extend the range, let's push Bobby up and put Gary on the line, absolutely. <laughs> and I found this, a collection of signed photographs, ranging of everyone there, from Gary Lineker to Steve Martin. We're pushing out... Gary, put, move Bobby down there and let's put Steve Martin on the other line. Now, be honest, who thought we'd get from Jim Davidson to Steve Martin in just three easy steps, ladies and gentlemen? It's an amazing thing we're on here. And I found this, Steve Martin to Tom Cruise. We'll stretch the range a bit further. Out to Tom Cruise we go. Then I found this about sunglasses worn by everyone from Tom Cruise to Prince Harry. Let's carry on the range. It keeps on going. Out to Prince Harry. It's around this time I started wondering, is it going to be possible to turn the corner, to complete the circle, to join up, to find someone between Prince Harry and Jim Davidson? Davidson and see if we could make a complete wheel of celebrity. Let's see how we got on. I found this about Prince Harry uh, to Snoop Dogg. They've both been to a certain nightclub and there we are. We've travelled all the way to Snoop Dogg. We really are motoring now. And then I found this, a YouTube comment saying everyone from Snoop Dogg to Darth Vader. Got a chance to ring the bell. OK, we've travelled out to Darth Vader. Ladies and gentlemen, from here I found a description of a book on Amazon about a samurai cat. A samurai cat who, as you can see, has defeated everyone from Darth Vader to Nazi dinosaurs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, is it just me <laughs> that thinks we might have completed the circle at this point, ladies and gentlemen? I think we have it. The complete wheel of celebrity, ladies and gentlemen. From Jim Davidson all the way around to Nat dinosaurs, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? That there is the wheel of celebrity. Isn't that a beautiful thing? 
Now, I think every, every male celebrity has to be represented on this wheel. I mean, if it's a wheel, it has to be complete. That's the way things work. It goes without saying that Kevin Bacon is in the middle there. We know that much. <laughs> Uh, but if anyone would like to name a male celebrity, I will tell you whereabouts I think they exist on the wheel of celebrity. Anyone? <laughs> Sorry, inevitably someone said Dave Gorman over there. Um, as much as I would love to be down here, I know I'm up here. <laughs> but what you don't know about me is that I am deadly from three yards, so I'm... <laughs> I'm here. Anyone else? <laughs> Sorry, one at a time, over here. Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. Well, he's in the music industry, so we're going to start over here. Um, and Prince Harry often dances on ceilings in Las Vegas. So <laughs> that's easy. This is a worrying part of the, of the chart, I think, Snoop Dogg. He's got to be a little bit worried. He's in between Darth Vader and Prince Harry. That's got to be a bit alarming for Snoop Dogg, I think, because, well, obviously, famously, Darth Vader was a father to someone who didn't know it. <laughs> and Prince Harry... <laughs> prince Harry is a prince. <laughs> It's got to be, got to say something, hasn't it, really? My, my favourite celebrity, uh, and I'm sure he's shared by many of you in here, my favourite celebrity is Lee Ryan from the boy band Blue. Um, OK. A little bit of a Duncan James faction in here, but most of us are, most of us are Lee, most of us are Lee. Very easy to put Lee on the chart. Uh, music industry, so we'll put him up near Snoop to begin with. But he is British and he has represented his country, albeit at Eurovision rather than uh, the military, so we'll nudge him a bit that way. Um, he is a bit of a shagger, certainly got a reputation as a bit of a shagger, that pushes him that way. Um, not the sharpest tool in the box. So uh, <laughs> that's where Lee Ryan appears. He is, he's a wonderful, I love Lee, I really do. He's, he's a wonderful human being. He's got a wonderful indefatigability of spirit. Nothing ever knocks Lee Ryan down. He just carries on being Lee Ryan from Blue, whatever happens to him. If you don't know who he is, uh, this is a little interview, a little snippet of an interview with Lee Ryan. I mean, I must have written about a thousand songs. Yeah, I must have written about a thousand songs, yeah. Honestly, in about four years, you can imagine how many yeah. songs I've written. Yeah, honestly, in about four years, you can imagine how many songs I've written. I can, Lee, I was imagining less than 250 a year, to be honest with you. <laughs> but that's why I like him, because he's so positive the whole time. My favourite website for Lee Ryan News, I always want to catch up with what he's up to. Uh, I always go to this website, so it's lee-ryan.org. I'm sure many of you are uh, frequent visitors as well. And if you are, then like me, you'll be a bit upset about the fact that it closed not so long ago. It's very sad news. Uh, the two girls who ran it, Maddie and Caroline, they do explain on their website why they were forced to close it. And that's their words, they do say, we are extremely sorry to announce that we are forced to close leeryan.org. Forced. After running this fan site for six consecutive years, that's six consecutive years, not two years on, one year off, two years on, one year off, two... Six consecutive years, I mean, We decided to do it for several reasons. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you what those reasons are when we come back in a few short minutes. This is Modern Life is Goodish. My name is Dave Gorman. And the aspect of modern life that we're examining this evening has so far kind of been celebrity, the world of celebrity. And before the break, we were looking at the website, lee-ryan.org, uh, and the sad news that it had closed. I was going to tell you the reasons why the owners had given this statement. We're extremely sorry to announce that we are forced to close lee-ryan.org after running this fan site for six consecutive years. We decided to do it for several reasons. And here, ladies and gentlemen, are the reasons... Firstly, we are no longer Lee Ryan's fans. <laughs> Which is why running this website became pointless for us. <laughs> I love Maddie and Caroline. I know nothing about them, but I love imagining the Maddie and Caroline that I can see when I close my eyes. I love imagining the final six, eight, nine months of their life together running a Lee Ryan fan site, meeting up once a week on a Tuesday, having a slice of cake and a cup of tea, saying, oh, what news have you got about Lee? Both of them in their hearts thinking, I couldn't give a shit anymore. <laughs> I feel sorry for Lee. I love him. I really do. He's a wonderful man. Where would you say, just as a, as a little question, if, if I said to you, uh, is Lee Ryan, would you say he was an A-list star? No. Would you say that he was a Z-list star? Probably a bit further up than Z. A bit further up than Z. It's an interesting system, isn't it? The A and Z list and so on. People use it all the time, but they only use it really to mean two things. In my experience, A list is a compliment, and anything from B down is an insult. 
Which means that really, we've got one level of superstar and 25 degrees of shit, which is a very <laughs> odd... It's a very odd way to talk about other people, if you ask me. But people, if I said to you, oh, yeah, here comes another series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, I wonder what bunch of B-listers they've got on this year, that sounds right, doesn't it? Because a B is an insult. That's how, that's how it's always used. Here's an example, They're talking about one of those reality shows. Here's the lineup of B-list celebrities and athletes set to compete on the new Dancing with the Stars, says Business Insider. Here's another one. C-list celebs you might have a chance with, yeah. <laughs> celebrities so lowly that you, a normal person, might possibly be able to have sex with them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for a laugh, I thought it'd be interesting, I sent a friend of mine out with a camera and a microphone to see if he could find someone who used the middle of the alphabet. We teased it all up by giving them obvious A-listers, things like this. The Queen's probably like A. I'd give her an A. A-list, yeah, she definitely would be. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Queen, yeah, definitely A, yeah, yeah, the Queen. Tom Cruise? A. You'd have to be an A-lister, wouldn't he? A-list, yeah. Yeah, definitely an A. Actually, and then the idea was to just keep giving new names and eventually I thought somebody's going to be forced to accept that there has to be something between D and Z that you can actually use. But most people wouldn't do it. Most people would go, if they liked them and they were a superstar, they'd say A. If they thought they liked them and they were British, they'd say B. And if they didn't like them, they'd say Z or D. And there was very little in between. And then eventually, eventually, we found one person. One person who really had 26 levels of thought... <laughs> about celebrity. It's a remarkable thing. Just watch this. Ashton Kutcher. K. <laughs> How does she do that? How does she wrinkle her nose and decide that Ashton Kutcher is a K? And I want to be very clear here, the question was not what letter of the alphabet does his surname begin with? <laughs> it wasn't can you put these celebrities in alphabetical order based on surname. It was just here's a celebrity, what list are they on? Ashton Kutcher K. It's weird. I, would, I wouldn't have been able to work that out. And then, this is even weirder. Demi Moore. P. <laughs> How can there be that much room between Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore? She's been in loads of famous films. She was in G.I. Jane. She was in Charlie's Angels. She was in Ghosts. She was in all sorts of things. The most famous thing he's been in is Demi Moore. This makes no <laughs> sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> This is insane, isn't it? They were married, he's been in Dude, Where's Your Car? and a couple of sitcoms. How can he be K and she be P? Now, my friend who went out with a microphone, I'd given her a big list. I, I wrote, like, 80 or 90 names on a list, and I thought, well, that'll be fine, she'll be able to work with those. Uh, but then she went a bit off-piste. She started asking about names that no-one had asked her to ask about. For example, this one. Dave Gorman. <laughs> That wasn't a very nice thing to do. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. What about Dave Gorman? I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Dave Gorman. I don't know who that is. I do not know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone right off her lately. I liked her to begin with, I've gone off her now. Now, let me be very clear here. I do not have a huge ego that demands everyone knows who I am. I'm very comfortable living in a world in which I know most people don't know who I am. I don't have to put up with the creepy people with long lenses. It's a very happy, lovely place to be. I love where I am on this earth. But also, I don't expect to get a phone call from a producer saying, Dave, come down to the edit suite. We've got something to show you. <laughs> and then sitting me down for a 35-minute montage <laughs> of people denying my existence. <laughs> That's a weird thing to do to me. Eventually, eventually, they found one person, one person who did know who I was. Dave Gorman. Dave Gorman. I like Dave Gorman. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, huh? She's my new favourite, yeah. She knows who I am, she quite likes me. It's quite nice all of a sudden, isn't it? But what letter of the alphabet <laughs> do you think she gave me? I'll tell you what. I like Dave, so yeah, we'll go for an R. <laughs> she likes me and I'm an R. <laughs> I'm an R from someone who likes me. <laughs> now, 
If you can't get a real celebrity to do something for you, you can book a look-alike celebrity, and the look-alike world is an intriguing and strange world. There are loads of different look-alike agents out there. My favourite uh, is Susan Scott Lookalikes. Susan Scott's been a look-alike agent since 1979. She's got a wonderful website, and, and the reason that she's my favourite uh, is that she has a YouTube channel, she has a Twitter feed, and she has a blog. It's a wonderful thing. You get to see the inner workings of a look-alike agency. Most agents represent a small number of artists who've built up a skill and a talent and have devoted their lives to a thing. But a look-alike agent represents thousands of people who happen by chance to look like someone else. They don't get much work, they don't stay in touch with their agent, they move house, they change phone number and she doesn't have a clue where they are. This is my favourite example from the blog. Uh, this is a wonderful thing. This is the blog in question. Now my colleague Helena is just on the phone explaining that our Mr Motivator is unfortunately not available as he is in prison. <laughs> we think. <laughs> We're not sure, we just think. I'm still putting it out there. It's a wonderful thing. You realise her job is impossible. And you realise also that doing her job for so many years has done something to her brain, I think. So you get comments like, this is a, her YouTube page, this is a website, this is where they put a video of their Michelle Obama lookalike. Now somebody had left a not very pleasant comment underneath this video. I'm not going to show you that comment, I don't wish to aggrandise the person who wrote it, but essentially they're saying she doesn't look very much like Michelle Obama. Susan Scott lookalikes responds, if you're such a critic, we know what she means, if, if you're such a critic, then let's see what you look like, or can you do better? <laughs> That's not a valid argument, is it? <laughs> if someone says, I don't like this cake very much, you are entitled to say, well, could you bake a better cake? Fine. If someone says, you don't look like Michelle Obama, you can't go, well, could you look like Michelle Obama? <laughs> This is on Twitter. She's endlessly entertaining on Twitter. These are two consecutive tweets. And the first one, just had a shock whilst trying to contact Thierry Henry. Of course, it didn't mean Thierry Henry, it meant the lookalike. I've censored his name because I don't want to be insensitive. Just had a shock whilst trying to contact Thierry Henry and found that he died 18 months ago. <laughs> How sad. Now, that is sad, and you can tweet that if you want. We learn something about the industry here. We learn that she hasn't had a booking for a Thierry Henry lookalike for over 18 months for a start. But this is the thing that makes it weird. The next tweet. Marvin Downer, a.k.a. Thierry Henry. Hello, where are you? How can you disappear on me? Eh, one of the Thierry Henrys has died. Get the other one! <laughs> and where is Marvin? Why has he disappeared? Maybe there's a serial killer out there specialising in Thierry Henry lookalikes. <laughs> if there is, Thierry Henry must be shitting himself. <laughs> what a weird industry to be in. Nothing illustrates that better than this blog that she wrote. Uh, she's talking about how people are going kind to of tough times, not getting that much work, certainly not booking any events or corporate entertainment. A familiar cry for 2009. We must just hope that some major media frenzy will occur involving a celebrity that we can provide a great lookalike for and the work will flood in. This blog then continues, ladies and gentlemen, with the following words. Although what could have been better than the death of Michael Jackson? <laughs> what could have been better than the death of Michael Jackson? Now, I'm not criticising her for writing that. That makes sense in her world. She's a look-alike agent. That is no different to a commodities trader talking about how the cold winter affected the potato crop and sent share prices up or down or whatever. That makes sense in her world. And she's been in that world for so long that no part of her brain told her fingers to stop typing that <laughs> because other people won't quite see it the way you see it. That's weird, isn't it? Oh, yeah, which resulted in zilch for us, so it has to be the right media frenzy. I love this world. I was looking through all of this, and uh, I was at home on the, on the internet, and Mrs Gorman came up to me and said, um, oh, this is interesting, is there one of you? And I said, of course there isn't. Why would there be one of me? I'm just an R-list celebrity. Why would they do that? <laughs> but she said, well, is there? And I looked, and, and there wasn't. And then I thought, she seemed a bit disappointed. She seemed a little bit crestfallen that her husband did not have a lookalike. And I thought, wouldn't it be a nice present, a nice surprise, if I arranged for a me look-alike to actually exist. Because I do know someone who really, really, really looks like me. <laughs> me. <laughs> 
So I looked at the website just to see what kind of photos people were sending in. Some of them were kind of like professional shots, but some of them were a bit weird. Like this one, is, this, is, this is not, I don't think, a very professionally taken photo. You can see he's taking it in a mirror. That's the camera down there. And something appears to have been chopped off. He's chopped off like a whole half of the photo. I wonder what was it? Maybe it was Kate Winslet. I don't know. So I figured the standard of photo doesn't have to be very good. So I went to a friend's house and I went into the bathroom and I took a sort of selfie picture and I made myself look a bit not like me. I sort of straightened my hair and I, I just changed a few things. I didn't wear what I normally wear. And, and I got that photo. <laughs> and I thought, well, that definitely looks like me but sort of not like me at the same time, I'll send it to all the lookalike agents I can find just for a laugh, <laughs> just to see if any of them bite. Now, if I'm really honest with you here, what I was expecting to happen is to get six emails back saying, not really any call for a Dave Gorman lookalike, thanks but no thanks, and I thought, you know, if that happened, I would bring it up while I was here, and it'd be a bit self-deprecating and charming, and I'd be all humble, and it'd be a bit funny. But actually what happened is that most of them just didn't bloody reply at all. <laughs> I didn't even get the polite rejection emails at all. The one who did respond, though, oh, so happy. It was my favourite. <laughs> Susan Scott. <laughs> Susan Scott, or someone who worked for her, did write back to me saying this, Dear Martin, I used the fake name Martin Andrews, OK? I had to use a fake name, because if I used my real name, <laughs> it definitely wouldn't have worked. <laughs> You can see why that had to happen. So I sent an email using... I've got a fake email address. I've got a fake phone number. I've got the things I need for a bit of mischief from time to time. I sent this email. She replied, Dear Martin, thank you for your application and photo. You definitely look like Dave Gorman. And you can't fault her logic for a moment there, <laughs> gentlemen. I do look like Dave Gorman, for sure. And I would be interested in taking you on my books. Happy days. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the photo that I sent to Susan Scott lookalikes. This appeared on the Susan Scott lookalikes website, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Martin A as Dave Gorman. What they don't know is that that is Dave Gorman as Martin A as Dave Gorman. I am now officially my own lookalike <laughs> on the Susan Scott lookalikes website. I showed it to Mrs. Gorman. She was delighted. <laughs> she didn't realise it was me. <laughs> she said, blimey, he really does look like you. Don't like his hair, but he looks like you. It was hilarious. And I thought, that's it, that's the end of the joke. I've done it to entertain my wife, and it has entertained my wife, and now I, I leave it, and no harm could come. But then... <laughs> <laughs> I did get one booking. <laughs> Martin Andrews, my lookalike, who's really me, got one booking. It was very exciting. And I'll tell you all about it when we come back after this short break. <laughs> My name's Dave Gorman, and I promised you to tell you about the booking that my lookalike, who's really me, got, and I will shortly. Uh, but tonight, we've been talking about celebrity, and it's an interesting world. I think especially because when the world decides that someone is a celebrity, they also decide that we can then talk about them in a weird shorthand. We all think, well, we all know about that person, so we can all just uh, assume this knowledge about them, and it goes on like that, and it's a weird thing to do. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, who here, just by show of hands, who here does know who Clarence Clarissa Dixon Wright is. Okay, that looks like about uh, a half of you. Now, for those who don't know, this is her Wikipedia page. There she is, Clarissa Dixon Wright. Uh, she's an interesting woman. Her name alone makes her fascinating to me. This is her full name, ladies and gentlemen. She is Clarissa Teresa Philomena Aileen, Mary Josephine Agnes Elsie, Trilby, <laughs> Louise Esmeralda Dixon Wright. <laughs> That's a hell of a name, uh, and she's a very interesting woman. As Wikipedia makes clear, she is best known, best known for being one of a double act on a TV show called Two Fat Ladies, which is interesting given that she's named after ten fat ladies in a hat. Anyway, <laughs> the thing is, 
she's made this TV show, Two Fat Ladies, and it's about cookery, and it was hosted by her and another woman. They're both a bit large. And that means the world has decided that when we talk about her in future, it is now perfectly reasonable to just call her Fat Lady Clarissa. Which had never struck me as odd until I was in my house one day. I had a friend visiting from America who'd never heard of her. I was on my laptop, on my sofa, and he was looking over, and he saw a headline, and he got really freaked out by it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the headline here. Eat badgers killed in controversial coal, says fat lady Clarissa. <laughs> now imagine you don't know who that is, and you're from a foreign land. You just think the British press are writing stories about random statements from random fat women and also calling them fat. That's weird. How would you react to that if you didn't know who she was? This is an interesting story, though. I enjoyed this story. Uh, it's about the badger cult. And she said, we should eat the badgers once we've culled them because it's meat and it's good. Now, it made it for a good story for the papers because it it wasn't just her who got involved. Brian May from Queen is a friend of the Badgers, ladies and gentlemen. He got very upset by Clarissa and her attitude. He responded saying this, I think we should seriously consider eating senseless people like this Clarissa, whoever she is. She's obviously outlived her usefulness. I wonder if she would be best boiled or braised, yeah. <laughs> nice one, Bry, sticking it to her, yeah? But he's fallen into the trap of insulting her, partly for not being famous enough with his whoever she is. Like, oh yeah, I'm much more famous than her, my opinion counts more than her. But the public love this kind of story because they get a fully-fledged bitch fight between two celebrities. And that draws people to the story like flies round shit. <laughs> and this is a wonderful thing for my hobby of collecting the weird comments from the bottom of the internet. <laughs> I visited seven, eight, nine, ten different news websites and forums where this story was being discussed, ladies and gentlemen. I collated the weirdest comments I could find, none of which were written by me, all written by genuine people. I've compiled them into something that I like to call a found poem, which I would like to perform for you now. Clarissa Dixon Wright represents all that is wrong about England. Clarissa Dixon Wright? She's Clarissa Dixon wrong, if you ask me. <laughs> this horrible woman would probably enjoy roast pleb, too. She's that sort. A posh sort. Clarissa Dixon Wright is just a telly cook who is no longer on the telly. And Brian May is just a pop star who is no longer in the charts. As such, their opinions are irrelevant. <laughs> if this was one of the hairy bikers and Rihanna, I would understand. <laughs> and while I like the hairy bikers, it is not about that. And I can prove it by telling you I do not like Rihanna. <laughs> Badger burger, it rhymes. <laughs> Badger burger, lol. <laughs> Clarissa Dixon Wright is 100% right about this, and not just because I agree with her. <laughs> it is morally wrong to kill an animal and then not eat it. Anything that dies should be eaten. That is the circle of life. <laughs> Liberals are up in arms because they think badgers are more important than people. But, as I've always said, badgers don't vote. <laughs> people are more important than badgers. End of. Would these so-called liberals complain if the badger meat was given to people on benefits? Maybe these people think tuberculosis has rights too. Because it is just a tiny animal when you think about it. Everybody knows badger loves mashed potato. Lol. Human beings are at the top of the food chain. Our ancestors fought for that right. And we should respect that and defend it with badger pie. I thank you. The Bill Ross Quartet, ladies and gentlemen. The Bill Ross String Quartet. Now, ladies and gentlemen,
Earlier on, I promised you that I would tell you about the booking that I received from the Susan Scott Lookalike Agency as a lookalike for myself, because she thinks I'm a man called Martin Andrews. Now, it's very exciting to me. Like I say, I have an email address and a phone number that aren't actually registered in my name that I use occasionally for the purposes of mischief. And suddenly, that phone rang. And it doesn't ring very often, and I got a bit excited, and I answered it, and she said, Hello, it's Caroline from the Susan Scott Lookalike Agency, and my heart stopped. <laughs> and she said, It's very exciting, we've got a booking for you. And I said, Really? How? <laughs> and she said, It's from a TV production company called Liberty Bell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this show is made by a TV production company called Liberty Bell. <laughs> What Caroline told me <laughs> is that the people from Liberty Bell who knew that I was planning to talk about lookalikes in one of the shows... <laughs> <laughs> ..had been on the website, <laughs> discovered there was a lookalike, didn't know that it was me, <laughs> and thought, let's surprise Dave. <laughs> by booking a lookalike who can tiptoe on stage behind him, tap him on the shoulder when he's doing the bit he wants to do about lookalike agencies. <laughs> she explained all that to me and I thought, the cheeky sods. <laughs> Nobody's asked me about that, how dare they? And that sort of made me go, all right, then I'm up for that, yeah. <laughs> because now they think they know something's happening and I'm the only one who actually knows what's happening. But then, I should have thought about this, it all got a little bit out of hand. <laughs> a few days later, I had an email with a contract on it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the contract that received. A contract between Dave Gorman by Martin Andrews that is really Dave Gorman by Martin Andrews by Dave Gorman, but only I know that, and Liberty Bell Productions. I have had the funniest few days in our show office. <laughs> while they occasionally go into corners and whisper, and I occasionally go outside to take a phone call from a lookalike agent. <laughs> I have been loving it. <laughs> the contract states, ladies and gentlemen, the artiste is engaged as a Dave Gorman lookalike to make a surprise appearance at the filming of a programme featuring the real Dave Gorman. <laughs> Client is to provide transport to and from Chiswick for artiste and two guests who will be sitting in the audience. Uh, and also, the artiste is to wear a checked shirt and jeans. <laughs> a la Dave Gorman. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I have to say, I have fulfilled that part of the contract. <laughs> now, it was at 5.30 this evening, I had a phone call saying, the car's here that I had to confess to the team what I'd done. I had no choice, but I didn't want anyone to get into trouble. So I'm afraid I've been a very naughty boy, and I want to speak directly to Susan Scott right now, because Susan Scott, you haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> you had an email from a man who does look like Dave Gorman saying, do you think I look like Dave Gorman? And you said yes, and you were right to say yes. <laughs> You had a phone call from a TV production company wanting to book that man, and you said yes, and that was the right thing to do. I should have said, no, I can't do it. I'm really sorry. You did everything right. I was very naughty. I will not take my share of the fee. <laughs> Susan, I apologise wholeheartedly. I love you a little bit. <laughs> And you can have all of the money for doing everything right because you were the only one polite enough to actually respond and play ball with me. So thank you ever so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching. Tonight we have covered the whole range. A whole range. Everything. Everything. <laughs> From celebrities to people who look a bit like celebrities. <laughs> And along the way, I have been a very, very naughty boy, for which I am very, very sorry. But I think, once again, we have proved conclusively that modern life is goodish. Good night.